What's up everybody, Brian Fonseca checking in here for the Action Network and today we're going to be talking about some boxing because we have a few fights this week that we want to bet on. One in particular that we're primarily going to highlight that's going to be on ESPN and boxing is a sport that I know I follow and that I bet on probably more often than the average person. So let's get into it. Our main event this week, even though Anthony Josh was fighting in Britain and he's the big name in action, but he's a minus 1600 favorite, perhaps even more than that by now, against Robert Hellenius in a fight that probably isn't worth your time. We have Emmanuel Navarrete, who's defending his WBO Super Featherweight Championship on ESPN against Oscar Valdez, who is a former featherweight champion who's moving up to Super Featherweight. Both are now at 130 pounds. Emmanuel Navarrete was a champion at Super Bantamweight Weight and Featherweight. Here's what we're looking at in terms of betting on this fight. Emmanuel Navarrete, champion, slight underdog, depending on where you look in that plus 130 to plus 150 range, depending on the book. Oscar Valdez is a minus 170, minus 160-ish favorite, again, depending on where you look. Oscar Valdez is a more skilled fighter than Emmanuel Navarrete, which is why he's his favorite. However, he does give up a six inch reach advantage and does give up a little bit of a height disadvantage as well. Stylistically, here's what we're looking at. Navarrete is somebody who is a straight up brawler. It's not pretty and you probably wouldn't want your friend or your family member to fight this way, but Emmanuel Navarrete gets it done 37 and one, 31 knockouts. And the reason he's so captivating is because of that punching power, the stalker ability really fights true Mexican style, warrior style, and it's going to bring it to Valdez all night long. Valdez can also bang. He's just a little bit more of a well-rounded fighter, but he has some pop in his shots as well. 31 and 1, 23 knockouts. His only loss to Shakur Stevenson, who's starting to become recognized as one of the pound for pound greats in the sport and has been probably for the last couple of years or so. So Oscar Valdez, wow disadvantaged physically he is the more skilled fighter for me i've been leaning oscar valdez really for the duration of the build up to this fight because of the skill i could see this going navarrete's way and if you think navarrete is going to win i suggest you pick it by knockout he was dropped against liam wilson not as big of a puncher but dropped by liam wilson nonetheless in his last fight in the fourth round it was his first fight at super featherweight navarrete's that is and he got dropped in the fourth, responded by getting the TKO in the ninth, but kind of looked sloppy. It looked a lot more effortful, if that's a word, uh, than a lot of us would have expected given how much of a favorite he was going into that fight. Oscar Valdez is a higher level opponent. However, he's been dropped, according to box rec, four times in his career, but I'm going to lean Oscar Valdez by decision. It seems like the safest play. You can find that plus 130-ish, plus 140, plus 125, depending on where you look. It's not a guarantee because nothing is in this sport. Nothing is in betting because it's betting at the end of the day. But with Oscar Valdez, he is a more skilled fighter. Manuel Navarrete, while he's been dropped before, has never been stopped. And Oscar Valdez, we're going to lean on his technical ability in order to take this home. If you're betting Emmanuel Navarrete, though, look at the knockout because that's something that could actually play out given his power, his precision, and just his ability to potentially wear down the slightly smaller and definitely shorter armed Oscar Valdez. Thank you for watching. I'm Brian Fonseca. Make sure you bet responsibly and uh, don't go broke while watching the fights. Enjoy.